Hey guys, and a very warm welcome to Friday Fretworks. First and foremost, just to thank you for sticking with me through what was a relatively disruptive service last weekend, um, with the hammering and the banging from next door, with my cold, which is mercifully disappearing very slowly, and um, my comedy pirate scar as well, which is without stitches, um, obviously still there, but again, fading very slowly. So thank you for sticking with me, and hopefully normal service shall be resumed this week. Um, today, I want to pick up on a theme that I guess I inadvertently started about a fortnight ago with a video called Three Pedals That I Can't Live Without. Um, one of the very justifiable criticisms that I received of that video um, was that they were actually three pretty expensive pedals, um, which wasn't my aim um, to set out to do something either cheap nor expensive. It was just three pedals that I picked from my board, which I felt were integral to my tone. But a lot of people picked up on the fact that individually they did fall into relatively uh, high price category. Firstly, we had the Origin FX Cali 76, which at the time I bought it was £299. Um, it's come down a little bit since then, it's about £269, I think. Um, but mine is actually that pedal show special edition as well, serial number two. Um, so nerd points for that one. But obviously that's a pretty expensive pedal. Uh, secondly, we had the King of Tone. Again, a pretty expensive pedal, but if you haven't seen the video I did on this last week, um, dedicated to the King of Tone and whether it's, I guess, worth the hype or worth the weight, etc., etc., do go check out that video and read the comments. We actually had a comment from Analog Mike Piero himself, um, just chipping in in response to one of the comments. Um, and the point I wanted to make in regard to that and its price, it's excluding shipping and handling and import tax, which I got whacked with, which is obviously has nothing to do with Analog Man, that's just my place in the world. Um, the downtrodden Brit. <laughs> um, no, geographically placed, um, getting whacked with import tax. Um, comes around about 169, 170 quid, which for a handmade pedal with two stage overdrive or two gain stages is pretty good value, I would say. Um, but anyway, moving on, the last pedal is the analog, not the analog man, the Catlin Bread um, Echo Rec, which again, at the time I bought it, I do believe came up at around about the 200 pounds mark. And again, if memory serves, I actually bought that from Pro Guitar Shop. Um, in the US, so most likely got whacked with the import tax on that as well, but I can't remember. Um, but the reason I bought it from there is I bought it the day it came out, like an absolute lunatic. Um, couldn't wait to get my hands on it, because um, that was the only place at the time which was stocking it. Um, so, again, that was around about the 200 quid mark, so individually and accumulatively, pretty expensive pedals. Um, which, as I said, it wasn't my kind of um, reasoning to set up to do something neither expensive nor cheap, but obviously there's people out there looking to kind of achieve similar tones, I guess, but on a little bit more of a budget. So that is the theory of today's video, is to try and nail roughly those tones, um, but on a slightly smaller budget. So I've tried to kind of keep myself to similar sounding pedals, but as you'll see in a minute, I've fallen down on a couple of them um, through lack of discipline and lack of availability of pedals of a similar nature. Um, but the first pedal very much kind of falls into the category of what I was trying to achieve with that video. It is the Boss CS3 Compression Sustainer, the much loved or much loathed CS3, uh, depending on where you read. Um, People kick off about this and moan about its noise floor, moan about the general noise that you get from it, but in all honesty, in the time that I had it and used it, which was around about, about a year period, I guess, of using this, used it at a download festival, used it at a couple of big gigs, um, I absolutely loved it and it did what I wanted of it. Um, so in that respect, for a pedal which off the shelf costs about 80 quid, 85 quid, um, gets a job done. So compression sustainer. Second pedal um, is ones that are one I don't have to make any apology for, um, is the Boss BD2. Um, absolutely massive fan of this pedal. I bought it second hand many years ago for around about 45 quid I think, but again knew they only count about 85 quid. So great pedal with a massive list of much better players than myself using this very frequently. Andy Timmons spring into mind who uses this not only as an overdrive pedal but actually as his clean tone just rolling the volume back on his guitar. Um, as I said, when you've got people like Andy using it, don't have to make any apologies for it. The amount of wear over the front of this pedal is a test or a test to how much I've used it down the years. Third pedal is where I'm afraid we go slightly off piste. Um, I don't have a delay pedal that comes to under £100. Um, I did have a DD3 many years ago, which I now can't find. Um, though, um, but the only other delay pedal which sprung to mind, which I own, is the way huge Aquapus. But again, that came to around 100, 150 quid, I think, there and thereabouts. So, we've gone wandering off very slightly with the Diatone VC3 
uh, vintage tremolo. I bought this many years ago in a guitar shop in Summertown, um, outside Oxford, which is now gone. Um, the, the guitar shop, not Summertown. Summertown is still there. Um, last I checked, anyway. Um, and I think it was around about 100 uh, 100? Uh, 50 quid, rather. 50 quid, 60 quid, somewhere in that kind of price bracket. I don't think you can get them anymore. Gaia Tone, this series, anyway. I think Gaia Tone is still going. Um, but, obviously, the modern-day counterpart would very much be the Moogle Tridicopter, which, again, I use on my mainboard, but is well and truly Velcroed. Um, under some top layer, layers and all that kind of stuff, and would not come out unless kicking and screaming. So, for today, we're going to go with this. Uh, lastly... Again, even slightly further off piece. Um, I try to limit myself to three pedals, but I thought four was too much excitement not to use. We have the Moa Micro Looper. Um, you do obviously see guys incorporate uh, loop pedals into their live rig, Ed Sheeran being Egg, Ed Sheeran being a big one. Um, but you also see guys using the smaller ones like this for laid guitar parts. And all I can assume is they have a much more consistent or reliable right leg or right foot than myself. Because every time I try and do this to keep in time with the band, yeah, it's not even worth thinking about. So this gets a lot of use as a home little kind of device, I guess, just for jamming, writing, layering things up and getting a bit of a better feel of how they might sound with a full band. So in that respect, a fantastic pedal that gets a hell of a lot of use and I think is around about the 60 quid mark. So again, far from expensive and incredibly useful. So I'm going to wire these up um, and see how they sound. I'm going to use my um, Bang... Yamaha Revstar 502 this week because um, it gets a lot of questions whenever I do use it um, and we're going to see how they all sound which as ever is the best way to try and get a best sense of how something sounds so thank you very much for watching and as ever if you enjoyed this please do subscribe and stick around next week for another episode of Friday Fretworks cheers guys